was a real-world attack. It wasn't a proof of concept that was done by some white hat hacker in a laboratory at a, or at a security conference. This, these were real individuals who broke into a real-world system that had an effect on hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of motorists over days in one of the most traffic-congested areas of the world. I think LA has a, an excellent transportation system. We're thought of as the center of car culture in the US. We have about 6,500 miles of public streets. We have about 4,500 4, signals in the city of LA, which is um, one of the largest signal systems in the, in the world. Without the ATSAC center, um, it'd be very difficult to manage. Kartik Patel and Gabriel Murillo uh, were, were two uh, Los Angeles city employees who were accused of illegally accessing the city's computer system that controls the traffic lights and using it to create uh, days-long traffic jams in furtherance of protests that their union was, was conducting. On the surface of it, it sounds really, really sexy like Italian job, right? It sounds really, really sexy. At the time of the August 21st incident, I was working um, in the ATSAC control center where I was in charge of the engineers. I was kind of like the manager of uh, implementing and, and maintaining that whole system. So I, I in particular was accused of disconnecting signals and causing some kind of traffic backup. We lost communication from our centralized control center to these four signals. Just by the fact that I was on the system and very few people have remote access, that they felt that I got on there to do something kind of fishy. My name is James E. Blatt. I'm a criminal defense attorney in Los Angeles, and I was representing Mr. Gabriel Murillo. He was the key person in developing ATSAC, the Automated Traffic System and Control Center. He was the main troubleshooter, the developer, the inventor. My name is Sammy Kamkar. I'm a security researcher and computer hacker. Some of these control systems that are controlling our utilities, our traffic, are really prone to hacking. They're prone to vulnerabilities, uh, default passwords, they're on the internet when they shouldn't be. The only pro that I can see from actually these systems being hacked is demonstrating how possible it is. If someone presses a wrong keystroke, they can put hundreds of signals on flash in, a, in 30 seconds. If we wanted to make, say, Venice a highway, we would go 180 second green, we can go bam, 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 and we can do that just from a computer screen. It's a very, very, very efficient system, and it's one of those where if there was some kind of problem with it, and if it went down, then you'd really see the value of it, because you'd see a lot more gridlock everywhere. Uh, they have a, a program called the Graphic User Interface to monitor uh, and control the traffic light system. Well, that particular program had been shut down. Four of the major arteries, the lights were not working. There wasn't any significant difficulties in this matter, but it took three or four days to get the bugs out of the system. The hacks that these two individuals are alleged to have carried out is exactly the type of thing that security researchers have been warning about for uh, you know for a, a better part of a decade. I'm not familiar with like all the different firewalls and different things we have, but uh, we're comfortable with the, the level of security we have here. Now, given that they were able to impact only four intersections and they increased a great deal of aggregate delay on the arterials, affecting only four intersections out of, I don't know, roughly 4,400 or so, but whatever their message was, they weren't actually trying to bring the system to their knees. I think we really dodged a bullet there. In the city, every signal has its own secure system in such a way where if someone tries to change the signals and it's beyond the, the programming, it won't let it. Someone may make it inconvenient for the motoring public, but it wouldn't be an unsafe situation. You're creating potentially a dangerous situation where you shut down a particular bridge or access to a freeway where lives could be lost. Had the individuals responsible been fundamentally malicious in what they were trying to do, they could have caused an enormous amount of delay system-wide. But it was also a little bit of an inoculation. 
it uh, allowed us to uh, begin to develop the, the immunity necessary to protect ourselves against more dramatic infections. Anytime you use the internet as a way of communicating between computers, and any system the size of LADOT signalized traffic grid does that to some degree, you're vulnerable. Our system is not available to the internet, it's not out there. We really have uh, an old school hardwired system. Our CCTV camera system is all analog. A lot of our technology and software is just not up to today's standards. So that actually provides a level of security that probably a lot of agencies don't have. You know, again, we're comfortable with the technology we have. I'm one of the few people who had authorized remote access to the traffic control system from home, from a laptop. Those systems controlling our cities should not be on the internet. They should not be easily communicated with by anyone who has a phone or laptop. It's actually terrible that there are so many open hardware switches available online that actually anyone could access if they just knew how. You could potentially be controlling traffic lights. You could be potentially controlling oil refineries, you could be controlling water systems or water infrastructure, electricity, gas, pretty much any type of system. I definitely think you shouldn't be so confident that you can't be hacked. I think almost anything is hackable. Fortunately, there are a group of people and definitely a lot of hackers who are looking at this technology on a daily basis and trying to find new ways of exploiting it and then demonstrating it publicly, typically in a legal manner, but showing that, okay, some of our cities are not safe and we need to take measures to fix that. I did not do anything wrong. I did not cause any signal malfunction. I believe LADOT management made false statements. I believe the police created a story when they didn't even understand something. I believe the DA's office put their foot in their mouth and couldn't take it out. There's definitely different camps of thinking when it comes to whether hacking is better for society or worse for society. One group of people who believe, well, if you find an exploit, you shouldn't really talk about it. You should potentially talk about it privately with who's in charge um, and only disclose it to them. Give them time to, let's say, update their systems, to patch that vulnerability. But if they don't fix it within some amount of time, you should release it publicly. I think everyone should hack. I think everyone should learn how to hack. And the more people that know how to hack something, um, the more appreciation there is gonna be for the vulnerabilities that, that come with that. Technology is a moving target. I don't trust the hackers to teach us a controlled lesson. Every time you introduce a new technology, you have produced new vulnerabilities. And some miserable son of a bitch out there is going to try to exploit that. It's just human nature. Securities need desperately to hire outside auditors, people that will come in and perform what's called a penetration test to actually test the limits and the security of the systems that the cities are using. Exposing some of the things that can be hacked and how they can be hacked and really alter anything, it really gets other people to work together to sort of rally up and uh, fix some of these issues. There are good guy hackers out there and some of the solution can be crowdsourced. If you're willing to live with the outcome, then um, Go ahead and serve the greater good and break the rule. I think the insurrectionists among us are healthy elements in society. If there weren't folks out there that were prepared to insist on teaching us some of the important lessons, we'd never take delivery on the information. This phone can turn the city into a weapon. We got 40,000 people above us. We need a distraction. No one can hide from me. No one. Watchdogs. Pre-order now. Rated M for mature. PlayStation.